Are we living in a simulated reality? Are there things in our world that don't always add up to you? Are there things you have experienced or observed that are too good to be coincidences? What if we told you there was a potential explanation for that? Welcome back to Daily Dosage, and boy, do we have a lot for you today. Unless you are pretty young, you should have already seen The Matrix. It was a big deal in the 90s and early 2000s. The movie starts with our protagonist, a young hacker named Neo, who starts to think and feel that there is more to his world than meets the eye. He starts searching all around for information on the Matrix, which leads him to Morpheus, who is supposed to be a veteran hacker. Morpheus gives Neo two options, a red pill that will show him the truth and end his quest for it, but without any way to return to his usual life, and then the blue pill, which will make everything a dream. Surely enough, Neo picks the truth and wakes up in a world run by machines. It turns out there was a machine war in which the humans lost and became slaves to the machines. Neo realizes he had been living in a virtual world all this while. He had been living in a simulation run by machines, which many individuals did not realize, not even him, although he felt something was wrong. The premise of this movie was a game changer in its time, in both story and action. Not only was it a success at the box office, but it also succeeded in stirring up both scientific and non-scientific minds. Some wondered the possibility of us living in a simulation, being run by some higher being or species. For some, it was not the question of if we were trapped in a simulation. Instead, if we could develop our technology and AI to the extent that we could build our simulations and have people explore and live in virtual worlds. Movies like Star Trek depicted this well and served as motivation for those who were wondering about it. The holodeck in Star Trek allowed the movie characters to create realistic 3D simulations of any setting of their choice, be it real or imagined, and interact with the environment or characters within it. Depending on what the character wanted, there might be a predefined narrative within the holodeck. This allowed the characters to live in a simulation that felt indistinguishable from the real world. In fact, in the early stages of the movie when this was introduced, many of the characters struggled to tell the difference between the AI in these simulations and what was real. They were so lifelike that it was hard to tell. Some were even sentient, which added to the reality of the holodeck. But come on, these are all movie situations. There's absolutely no way that this could be possible in real life. Or could it? Allow us to introduce the theory of simulation, which states that we are living in a computer simulation. The theory of simulation questions reality as we know it, and proposes that the current existence as we know it, including our Earth, and the universe at large could actually be a computer simulation. Nick Bostrom remains one of the influential personalities on the theory of simulation. He published a paper in 2014 about the subject. He has made both philosophical and scientific arguments for the possibility that we are living in a simulation. His document does also state the ability of the human race to build a machine in the very near future that produces simulations that are indistinguishable from reality. Bostrom made three profound propositions in 2003, which he called the simulation argument. His three propositions have had a mixed reception among philosophers and scientists alike. First of all, he stated that the fraction of human civilizations that reach the post-human stage is very close to zero. The second proposition, was that the fraction of post-human civilizations that are interested in running simulations of their evolutionary history or variations of it are also very close to zero. His third and final proposition in his argument was that the fraction of people with our kind of experiences that are living in a simulation is very close to one. You might probably be wondering what exactly he is trying to communicate with all these technical words. Allow us to simplify. His first statement 
meant that humans are more likely to go extinct than to reach a post-human civilization. A post-human civilization to him referred to a civilization that was technologically advanced beyond our current capabilities with computing power that would blow ours away. He did not believe that our civilizations will survive long enough to become post-humans. His second statement also stated that if we ever did get to a post-human stage, no post-human will be interested in running simulations of their evolutionary or ancestral origins. He stated that although the post-human will certainly have the technology to create powerful simulations with conscious minds, the probability of them doing so is quite low. He further added that if a small percentage of these post-humans did create a simulation, it would definitely end up creating more sims than actual ancestors or human population. Remember the Sims game from EA? Yeah, something of that sort, but only this time, we are the Sims. He considered the first two the least likely possibilities of his propositions, which brings us to the third. He stated that if the third proposition was to be believed, that is, people with our kind of experiences live in simulations, then we are without a doubt living in a simulation. In his own words, Unless we are now living in a simulation, our descendants will almost certainly never run an ancestor simulation. Crazy, right? Can you imagine that everything that you thought you were and are now up till this point is nothing short of a simulation? Although all three propositions are possibilities according to him, it sounds like the third remains the most possible and probable one. The simulation theory has been criticized by a variety of scholars for a variety of reasons. One of the main arguments against it is the fact that Sims can be conscious. Many argue that there is no way that Sims can be conscious or have conscious experiences as unsimulated humans. Some scholars have also rejected it because they consider it merely philosophical and inherently unscientific. What answer does the scientific community have to the question then? Is this theory of simulation something that can be scientifically tested, considering all the variables it involves? Well, believe me when I say, science has an answer for everything, even this. The answer, of course, is quantum physics. Don't be scared, we won't confuse nor scare you much. John Archibald Wheeler, an authority when it comes to quantum physics, stated that there was the need to adopt a new view of reality in integrating physics with the digital world. The first of his propositions is the use of digital physics and cellular automation interpretation of quantum mechanics, which proposes that the universe is a computer. Do not get confused just yet, stay with me. The second follows it and suggests that any observable reality is completely virtual and the system or computer responsible for performing it is distinct from its simulation or the universe. Which brings us back to our simulation theory. Have you heard of wave particle duality? Hold your horses, we'll come back to that soon. If we are going to investigate a simulation, which in this case is our reality, then it's only safe to assume that the system being used for the test is finite in one way or the other. That is to say, the machine performing the simulation isn't doing so using unlimited resources. Such a system will then, hypothetically, have to function as a video game does due to its computational limitation. What this means is that the system will only have to create reality or content only at the point where it needs to be observed or experienced by a human or player for video games, and not at the moment of when the reality was not being observed. This is where conceptual wave-particle duality comes in. Now, allow me to explain particle-wave duality. This typically refers to the ability of matter to act as a wave at one point and then as a particle at another. Waves are different from particles in a variety of ways. Waves will pass through each other at the point of collision whilst particles will bounce off each other. A simple example is light which might bounce off a surface and get diffracted under similar circumstances with a slight change in variables presented. The double slit experiment is an excellent way to demonstrate this. 
as it was purposely designed to test the phenomena. For instance, when it comes to testing light using the double slit method, its wave nature causes the waves passing through the two slits to interfere with each other, producing an interference pattern of bright and dark bands on the screen. This result might not be so odd, yet it's not a result that will be expected if light is only made up of particles. This is where it gets interesting and maybe confusing. The double slit experiment is carried out by shooting electrons through a double slit with the expectation that it will behave like a particle. However, we end up observing an interference pattern formed at the back of the screen, which is typically what is expected of a wave. Mathematically speaking, it could mean that it either goes through both slits, goes through neither slits, or goes through one slit only. These are the possibilities which are in superposition with each other. This seemingly simple result was enough to baffle scientists and cause them to conduct further experiments to understand the phenomenon. They decided to do this by including a measuring device that will allow them to see which slit it actually went through and miraculously enough, the electron went back to behave like a particle and formed two bands on the screen without an interference pattern anymore. Essentially, the electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. This will imply that the electron has an awareness and dictates what we see. This could mean we are not necessarily living in base reality. But how do these confusing terminologies and principles tie in with our discussion? Have you traveled and only been able to see a little at a time? Does it look like the video games we play, where the distance is quite blurry due to constraints with computational resources? Could we simply explain it as limitations with regard to our ability to see? Or does it have to do with computational resources being limited? Let us take a look at a totally different but related theory, that is, Einstein's theory of relativity. Einstein theorizes that when traveling at light speed, time slows down. Our question is why? Can you guess? We'll give you 5 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If we are to explain his theory in terms of the theory of simulation, then we can say that the slowdown is due to the demand of insane amounts of computing resources that the system running the simulation is unable to provide, leading to a slowdown. In other words, traveling at light speed in our hypothetically simulated world makes it impossible for the simulation to keep up. Is that everything that science has to contribute to this topic, however? Not exactly. James Gates, an MIT theoretical physicist made a grand discovery that shocked the likes of Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is a world-renowned astrophysicist. He claims to have identified an actual computer code that describes the fundamental particles of our universe. He discovered this while working on his superstring theory. By computer code, we are not referring to one meant to be on our personal computer. We are referring to our world. He found the error-correcting codes, which could be big, is he the only scientist though? Nope. Elon Musk at the Code Conference in 2016 stated that the technology has advanced at a ridiculous pace. So you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos? Into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code. Computer code, strings of bits of ones and zeros. He further mentioned that considering this, the chances that we are living in the real reality and not one that is simulated is one in billions. Neil deGrasse Tyson also subscribed to the theory of simulation, stating that theory has more than a 50-50 odds of being true. In his own words, I wish I could summon a strong argument against it, but I can find none. This is definitely his own way of saying we are more likely to be living in a simulation than not. Not all scientists are enthused about the idea though. Max Tegmark, an MIT professor of physics, states that it is not logically incorrect to state we are in a simulation. However, he does not believe we are in one. 
He believes we will have to know the fundamental laws of physics in the real world as compared to our supposed simulation, which is not possible since all we are exposed to is the simulation. NYU nuclear physicist Zoray Davudi and David Chalmers also state that the probability of being in a simulation is very low. David further states that, if we were in a simulation, it will be hard to prove it since any evidence we gather will most likely be a simulation. As we can see, even some of the best minds of our generation find the subject a curious and interesting one. This is not something that started now, as popular individuals like the French philosopher René Descartes have once made statements that have alluded to this theory. René Descartes is at one time recorded to have said, It is possible that I am dreaming right now and that all of my perceptions are false. Let's pick contributions from more modern minds such as Italian-American physicist Enrico Fermi who postulated the Fermi paradox. Why haven't we come into contact with aliens when we live in a world that estimates a high probability of their existence, yet a consistent lack of evidence thereof? Fishy, right? Enrico Fermi thought so too, which led to the Fermi paradox. How does this tie in with our current discussion? Well, it is possible that this is a simulation that was created just for us. So, although there might be aliens outside the simulation, we will not see them until those in charge of the simulation deem it fit. What if, perhaps, these aliens are the one running the simulation? Well, we'll leave that up to you. What other argument can be made for the probability of us being in a simulation? If you are a gamer, there is something regarded as lag, where the system you are playing on experiences some sort of glitch due to the lack of enough resources, mostly internet. The player moves from point A to be B and C in real time, but is pulled back to point A because there were not enough resources to support it. Hence, the system goes back to the last supported and recorded point in the simulation. Have you had an experience and thought, hmm, this is oddly familiar, and you could tell what was going to happen next? Well, scientists call that phenomenon deja vu and have made diverse theories to explain it. But what if, what if it's a glitch in the simulation? What if it's a lag in the system at some point? What then should you do about the theory of simulation? Should you be carefree and live your life recklessly? Certainly not. We won't advise you to excessively party and waste away just because this reality is potentially a simulation. Should you then be worried that you're in a simulation? We don't think so. Live your life a day at a time. If it was a simulation, there's not much you could do about it anyway. If you're worried about a more intelligent species or higher beings simulating our reality, perhaps you should not have watched the video to this point. The COVID-19 pandemic in the world is enough for you to bear on your shoulders. Try not to be disturbed by this one. But we'll be as kind as Morpheus and treat you like he did Neo. Just as he offered Neo, we offer you two pills. Which will it be? The red pill or the blue pill? Unlike Morpheus, we advise you to take the red pill by hitting the subscribe button as we find out the truth about our reality. The choice is yours.